Does this video look familiar to you? Fear no more because I'm going to help you out and I'm going to be teaching you my ways of how you can cram for your exam. If it doesn't, then I highly advise that you click over here and check that video out before watching this one. But if it does, then hey guys, it's Mihail here and today I'm going to be teaching you how to cram successfully for both GCSE and A level. However, before we get into the video, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and turn post notifications on by clicking a bell. But without further ado, let's get into the video. So first step is to just determine how long you have until your exam. Obviously, it's ideal if you have a longer amount of time, but let's say you're, you've got 24 hours, for example, then this technique will also work. Just, it will not work on the actual day. So for example, if you're like two hours before the exam, then be realistic, you won't learn too much. I mean, it can work to an extent, but it won't work as well as it can. Cramming is only for when you have a short amount of time until your exam, as the information that you learn via cramming is stored in your short-term memory, and best believe that after that exam, you'll really quickly forget the information that you learned. And so, if you have loads of time left, then maybe cramming isn't for you just yet, and hopefully cramming won't be the one for you because you'll have revised effectively and won't need cramming. As I previously mentioned, cramming uh, stores information in your short-term memory, so there's a limit as to how much information you'll retain, so it's important that you only focus on the most crucial bits of information when cramming. So I would say this is your weakest areas or areas that come up a lot in longer answers. So for example, let's say I was talking about stakeholder mapping and it was a 20 mark essay and it came up every year in a form of 20 mark essay in business where the highest uh, marks you can get in a question is 25, then I would prioritize this. Or let's say for example, I didn't know too much about outsourcing and offshoring in AQA A level business was a weak area of mine. I would prioritize that in cram, uh, when cramming. So don't try to cram everything because like I said, you'll only be able to retain so much of it. So only focus on the most crucial bits of information and that is personal to you as to what is crucial and what isn't. So how about cramming itself? Firstly, you need to decide whether you're going to be cramming onto one Word document and this is ideal if you're, for example, uh, cramming an entire topic, or if you're cramming onto a flashcard, and this is ideal if, for example, you're tackling an exam question or a subtopic. You won't be able to fit an entire topic slash unit into one flashcard. Believe me, even if you manage to do it, chances are that you miss so much out and therefore it's just not possible. So. Decide which one is for you, whether it be a Word document. So for example, you just make bullet points of the most important bits on a unit slash topic onto one Word document. Or let's say you're covering just a subtopic or like a theory, then maybe a flashcard would be ideal for that. Now, this is what sets my advice apart from everyone else's. Instead of focusing on content via a textbook, cram in context to an exam question. You might be wondering, huh? But let me explain. Exam questions, especially longer ones, cover a topic or a theory. If you're cramming in context to a question, not only are you preparing yourself for a future question that may be similar, you are also learning the content at the same time and picking out relevant bits that would get you marks in a similar question. Therefore, by doing that, you're not just going through a textbook and literally copying everything you can and just thinking, oh yeah, that looks relevant, and just put it down on a flashcard or a Word document. You are practically, like this is in practice, actually doing it yourself, answering an exam question by making notes of the answers whilst also getting notes down on the theory or topic that is relevant. For example, an A-level business question that I've picked out, which is an essay question, I can't remember if it was 16, 20, 24, 25 marks, is 
To what extent are customers always the most important stakeholder in business decision making? By the way, I'm picking out a uh, business because I do business at university and I've got an A at A level, but it can be science, it can literally be philosophy, it could be anything you want it to be. I'm just picking out a business question to use as an example. This question in particular would uh, make sure that you are revising stakeholder mapping and the level of influence that customers have, internal and external factors of business decision making, I'm reading off some notes I made before, um, make you consider the size of a business and its influence and the different stakeholders that a business can have and so much more. Whilst revising uh, this question, not only will it provide a mark scheme type answer to this question, it will also prepare you for similar questions in the future, whether it literally be just a multiple choice question or an essay question. It's always good to look at mark schemes of past papers and specific questions as these are always, or usually, laid out in bullet points and therefore it's perfect to put down onto a flashcard for example because not it doesn't tell you everything about a certain topic it will tell you the relevant bits about a topic and when you are limited on time you can look at your flashcard already there in bullet point form and just repeat it to yourself over and over and over again so the way I'd say is read it first and then try and remember what's on the flashcard, see what you, uh, how much you remember, try and remember the bits that you don't uh, remember, etc. In order to be successful with cramming, you do need to identify what's important and what isn't. This is why I love cramming. Instead of simply making notes on a topic where you'll probably copy, be copying down everything after a sub uh, header on a textbook, you need to tell yourself, right, I've got a limited amount of time, I need to be making my revision as effective as possible and I need to be learning the most crucial bits of information as I won't retain all of this information, especially not in my long term memory. So therefore, what's important and what isn't? By doing this, you are understanding what the topic is about and then by understanding what the topic is about, you are then able to identify what's important and what isn't. What isn't important, you can disregard that, just try and remember it anyways in your head. But what is important, put it down onto a flashcard and then focus on that more. At the end of the day, you need to learn everything in a uh, subject specification because anything can come up in an exam. However, some bits are more important than others. For example, in A-level business, you got 3.1 and it begins with what is a business? And let me tell you, that bit of uh, content is way less important than say for example in 3.7 where you have That's way more important than the very first thing you learn in a level business. Therefore, it's up to you to decide what's important and what isn't. In a subject such as English, where you have to learn quotes, because I believe quotes aren't given, to, like books aren't given to you anymore in the exam for GCSE, so you have to learn quotes off by heart, which is painful because I was uh, I had access to the book when I did it. Uh, so let's say Squealer says something in Animal Farm. What you would do is you create a column. Um, of quotes and you create a column of who said it. Cover one side, for example, let's say you cover up who said the quote and then you read through the quote and be like, hmm, I don't know who said that. But, uh, move on to the next one. Oh, I do know who said that. And then once you know, once you've gone through that, cover the other side. So you have names and then you just try and remember as many quotes as you can from that person. This is very effective as not only does it test your knowledge, it will also ensure that you have the relevant quotes put down rather than literally every single thing someone can say in Animal Farm and just make sure that you are well prepared for the exam. If you are cramming the day before an exam, I would advise waking up late afternoon the day before. So for example, wake up at like 4 p.m. The reason I say wake up at 4 p.m., you might be thinking, that's disgusting. 
you're missing out on most of the day. Well, let's say you have, for example, a 9 a.m. exam. The most, most people, for example, I would stay awake for maybe 13, 14 hours a day. If you wake up at four o'clock and you're cramming non-stop from then until your 9 a.m. exam, from 4 p.m. to 9 a.m., you're going to be awake for 17 hours. And you know what? That's not so bad when you think about it because it's only a few hours more. So then you're in the exam, everything's fresh in your mind because you haven't slept yet, because if you sleep on uh, after cramming, you'll forget a lot of it. So keep it fresh in your head, do the exam. Literally, as soon as you get into the exam hall, just put down every like relevant bit that, uh, for example, if it's quotes, then just write down as many quotes as you can onto a piece of paper. And then go through the exam, let's say it's one and a half hours, just injured that one and a half hours, it's a bit rough, I know. But you know what? If you're in a position of cramming, then it's what you gotta do. And then once you're out of that exam, that's when you're free to just forget it all. Just forget it all. You don't need to know it again, because you've done the exam. So you can just go home and sleep through the day. And I know it may mess up your sleep schedule a bit, but you know what? you can fix it. I mean, harder if you have GCSEs because all the exams are closer to each other, so try to be careful. However, that is how I did it for my A-levels. I would wake up very late in the day and then just do an all-nighter and then literally just put all the information down on a piece of paper, get through the exam, go home and just pass out. Well, not quite pass out, but go to sleep. And that basically concludes how to cram for an exam, specifically for GCSE and A level. If you did enjoy this video, then make sure to leave a like, comment below, and subscribe. I hope these revision videos are helping you guys through the Easter break and beyond. If you didn't check out my previous video on cramming, then do check that out as well. Again, that will be in this corner. Make sure to follow me on social media that's at MahelX on Twitter, at MahelKhan on Instagram, and official MahelKhan on Facebook. Let me know in the comments below what other videos you want to see from me. And also make sure to subscribe and turn post notifications on if you haven't already. That will ensure that you do not miss a video when it comes out. And this has been Mahel, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.